Hey, I just thought I'd share this uh, quick tick tip with all you technology teachers out there, or even people who just want to have their kids play with something different. Um, I went out on the web and found a designer who designs um, these patterns for Star Wars snowflakes. He also has Harry Potter and some Marvel and some Disney Frozen. So any flavor you know of interest. And so usually what you do with his designs is you take them from paper and you fold them up in a certain way and you cut them out and you get a snowflake. Uh, this one, the Mandalorian, or, you know, like this one, the child. Or I know it has a name. I can't remember it. Haven't seen that episode yet. It's only been a week. Uh, I haven't caught up. So that's your traditional way of doing it. What I'm going to do today is show you how to pull that into Fusion 360 and turn it into a CAD file that you could then 3D print, cut on vinyl, etc. Um, maybe even design your own. So I'll go through, walk you through step by step how to do it in CAD, and there's other videos out there to help you do it on paper. Have a good holiday. All right, so as promised, I'm going to take you to this website. It is Anthony Herrera Designs, and he does the Star Wars Snowflake. And like I said, there are other designs on there. Um, he has more than just Star Wars, and there are other CAD packages out there. You could do this besides Fusion 360 here that I pulled up. You could do this in Onshape, SolidWorks, uh, just about any CAD package is capable of this. I'll go through the step-by-step -step of how I would put this into Fusion 360 from his PDF design. So I'm going to search his site, and I'm going to find a design that I want to work with. Okay, And there's a bunch to choose from. He's been doing this for years. And so there's different years of Star Wars, and there are uh, different flavors. Like I said before, Harry Potter, or the Guardians of the Galaxy, or Disney's Frozen. So, you know, lots of different things to choose from. Cool site, Etsy store, all that good stuff. Anthony Herrera Designs. So just, not, I don't have any relation to him other than I like his work. So if I pick the Star Wars collection, I pick the latest and greatest, of course, and what's going to come up? The Mandalorian, the latest and greatest of the Star Wars stuff. And so I can't grab it right here. Okay, I can just look at the image. So I'll have to close that. And then I'll scroll down to um, where he has the PDFs linked. And so if I select the PDF for the Mandalorian, it's just going to download the PDF to my computer, which is great. And there you see the paper pattern. Um, but you can't pull the PDF into most CAD file uh, formats very easily. And so I have a second uh, website I'm going to direct you to called ilovepdf.com. And again, I'll put these uh, as links in the video description. And so, you know, PDFs are great for printing, not so great for working with the design. They're kind of frozen. You can't mess with them too much. So I'll save my PDF file. And then I'm going to open up the website that I said, ilovepdf.com. And in their website, I will transform this PDF into a graphic that I can pull into my CAD. This website's great. It lets you break down PDFs into all kinds of other formats. Free, unless you pay for a subscription and get more features. Uh, but this will work for free. Uh, we're going to do PDF to JPEG. And so I'll select that. It says, upload your file. I select the PDF from my downloads folder. And then it pulls it in and I hit convert to JPG. And I download that JPG. Quick and easy, uh, free, awesome. And so now that I have that file downloaded, I can go into Fusion 360 and I can pull it in. There's the JPEG that downloaded just to show you it looks the same as the PDF and I can pull this file into Fusion 360 drop it in the background and then trace my CAD design right on top of it and you've probably done this if you've worked in CAD with other things having students do logos or you know from like their favorite car manufacturer or band or whatever uh, in this case we're just doing it for this uh, seasonal snowflake we open Fusion 360 we're able to see that I can import a file and so I'm going to import my JPEG and I'm going to drop it on one of the surfaces. It's called a canvas in Fusion 360 and then I'm going to go ahead and scale it and so I'm going to 
uh, use the tools to make it again I'll make it the 11 by eight and a half just like it would be on paper and I'm gonna edit my canvas I'm gonna try and get it fairly close to centered on the origin um, just to make the CAD sketching and alignment of everything easier so I'll do a little tweaking here to get that center line right on my origin of my CAD file or my CAD plane and so a little tweak I'm playing with the numbers your mileage may vary as to where you dropped it so now if I get a top view I can see that my image is lined up fairly well with my grid in CAD and so then I'll begin the tracing process so I'm just going to create a sketch right on top of this surface uh, and trace it using all the different um, sketch tracing tools uh, this is going to be sped up because I don't want to have you watch every little step I do but I'm just again create a sketch right on top begin by doing a few arcs and a few straight lines and away I go done I'm gonna go ahead and use my mirror tool now to take all those points I created and all those lines and I'm going to mirror them around that line I drew to the far right of my design right down that slice of the pie and I'm gonna mirror like 133 different or 138 different objects over this line and I'm gonna get the other half of the helmet across the line easy peasy hit OK there it goes then I'm gonna go back and create a circular pattern so I gotta go up to and you can see you know everything is still enclosed uh, I'll go up to create and I'll turn this into a circular pattern using the circular pattern tool from that menu and then I'll reselect all of my points and then I'll have to deselect probably one of the points so I've selected everything on the screen but the problem is then I can't select this center point because it's already selected as part of my objects. So I'll have to deselect it. So I'm going to go back to the object selection. Now that point right there is what I'm after. I'm going to go back up to my object selection. And then I'm going to shift click that center spot to deselect it. And then I'm going to go to center point selection and reselect that point. Again, it's not perfect on the background, but that's okay. And in order to make this the snowflake design that it was, I don't need five of them, I need six, and it'll completely fill in the circle. And I hit OK, and I end up with my pattern completely closed, all ready to uh, extrude or do whatever I want with um, that I can use a CAD file for. So again, I could create this into a drawing, make this into a 3D print, um, there's lots of different options. There's lots of different resources out there to learn how to turn it into all those things. I'm not going to cover all that right here. So I can uh, 
go ahead and extrude and select all the helmet parts that I want to become solids. I'm just going to extrude them probably to an eighth of an inch. Uh, I don't need it to be any bigger than that. If you've got a plasma, CNC plasma cutter or something fancy like that, you could make this out of metal even. Uh, so 0.125 is going to be my dimension, and I'm going to hit OK. And then uh, I'll show you, I'm going to go ahead and hide my canvas, which has my drawing on it, and show you that it is now a 3D model of the Mandalorian helmet. And I can manipulate it around like any other CAD object, of course, and export it and do what I want from here, now that it is created as a CAD format. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, hopefully you can have some fun with this with your students and uh, have a good time. So just a little information about me. Uh, this is my 18th year as a technology teacher. I've been doing this in a few different states and a few different formats. I am teaching from home right now due to COVID and I've taught online before, so this is not completely new to me. Uh, I am also a PLTW master teacher for computer integrated manufacturing and I've been doing PLTW classes for I think seven years now. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments or reach out to me. Uh, I'm out there. I'm in PLTW groups on Facebook and other locations. And maybe I'll create some more videos in the future if this one has a positive response. Have a great time. Uh, let me know uh, if this works out great for you and your students or what I can do better for next time. Thanks.